I'm a, a CEO and president of Outcrop Silver and Gold. Um, I, uh, I'm going to talk mainly, or, or uh, the main focus right now is our flagship Santa Ana project, where we accomplished quite a bit of drilling. Um, I think as a company, um, we're one of the few companies that are moving uh, a very high quality discovery uh, into the next stage of value as a resource. Joe, good to see you. I haven't seen you since September 2020. You went missing in action. What, what were you doing? Uh, drilling the whole time. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Hey, look, we're going to run through the story again, but because it's been such a while um, since we, we've we heard it, it might be worth kind of going over a little bit of old ground um, um, about you and the team first. So give everyone your track record background, please. I've, I've worked uh, for ma the majors, of course, for the first part of my career. And like a lot of uh, energetic geologists, you realize it's more fun working for the juniors because you get the, the decisions. Decisions are closer to your position, I should say. Um, so I've worked for Placer Dome in particular. It was a very educational uh, stand for me, actually, twice. I think uh, Placer Dome had some of the best geologists uh, in the world. Um, I was fortunate to put the uh, first drill hole in what's now Barrick's Gold Rush Mine. It's an underground mine in development with, I don't know, more than 10 million ounces at, at uh, 10 or 12 grams. Uh, other than that, a good uh, uh, 36 years, all aspects of economic geology uh, from discovery right on through uh, Get, bring it out of the mind. I, I, I recognize some of the names on the um, the, the the team. Ian, Ian Slater, for one, who, who we've spoken to in the past. But in terms of people on the ground, who, who's helping you? Yeah, you know, we're really fortunate, and and the timing's been his timing's excellent. As we just hired Guillermo Hernandez as VP of Exploration, and we were able to hire him away from a good job with Lundin Mining at Fruta del Norte. Uh, you know, so big company, I mean, important company, successful company, uh, successful geologist in that company. But I think especially it's timely that he's, he's coming on board with his resource estimation skills. At the same time, we're putting our first resource uh, together. Right. OK. Um, and and let, other, sorry. Otherwise, we have, I'm sorry. Otherwise, we have some excellent people, country managers uh, that have been in that role. Uh, for various companies over the years in Colombia, and I would say in particular, very strong group of project geologists and very strong uh, social uh, directors. Okay, well, you're going to need them, right? Because um, the news coming out of Colombia is that it, it's, you know, it had been out of favor, got back itself back into favor, um, and then Petro seems to be well, let's say muddying the waters somewhat. So what's the reality of doing business on the ground at the moment? The, the aspect with Petro uh, for us, I think, is uh, any impact really is, is a couple of years down the road. He ran on uh, two basic things. Uh, one, the most important was be to distribute wealth to the countryside. That, that was, frankly, a failure of the center-right administration's previous. The other was more macro uh, effects on climate change, which, of course, is oil and um, coal that's being produced in uh, Colombia. So I think they will see, you know, some uh, changes with this respect to the registration uh, regulations. And I think there'll be sort of a, and that'll keep him very busy for, for a couple of years. I think uh, there may be at some point, he may look closely at open pit operations. Uh, again, that's related to coal and ferro nickel first. And I think really, if you have a good uh, community relationship where the community is actually advocating for you, uh, I, I think, you know, essentially you're bringing a mine will bring wealth to the countryside, at least in that area. So I think uh, I think actually uh, our social programs are good enough where I think uh, the local people will ad advocate for our uh, continuing operations. Right. I mean, it seems to be a continuing theme throughout South America at the moment. We've, we've heard, you know, horrific stories coming out of um, Chile and, and, and Peru to name but a few. Um, so I, I hear you with the lo local relations, um, you know, need to be need to be maintained. But in terms of the economics of this, the, the, the anti-fossil fuel component, um, that's going to have an effect on, on, on the GDP, which is, again, perhaps will, you know, It'll be it'll be a longer determined outcome there in terms of you know what that what that means. But does operating sorry does hunting for silver help you? Is that viewed as a green commodity given some of the use cases, whether it be solar solar panels or 
um, elsewise, or is it is it a frowned upon precious metal um, that it's viewed as? No, I think a primary silver or a majority silver is a benefit in that respect. I mean, there's uh, I've seen some articles about the amount, massive amount of silver that's going to be required just for electric vehicles. I'm not even talking about solar. Uh, so, I mean, in, in that in that aspect, and in that aspect of, of the petrol administration being green, I, I think we are, you know, bringing something to the, to the country, possibly. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to start, um, um, Joe, I'm just trying to kind of, kind of get the thesis right here. So, um, so in terms of the, the country country risk or out, you know, attitude to mining in, in country is, is one thing. Then there's attitude to silver. I mean, again, so silver seems to be playing its role well in terms of being quite erratic and un, unpredictable. It went on a run the past couple of years and then it's come, come off again. So do you think in the markets, people are viewing silver projects favorably? I mean, I do. I think I think silver. Um, I mean, for the for the for the for the traditional past reasons, which was a, an industrial commod industrial mineral, um, now being more of an industrial mineral, uh, and then people coming off what I think or what some people think is the bottom of the of the silver uh, crash or, or silver uh, uh, diminution. Um, I think it's going to resume its role of uh, providing a uh, better and faster return than gold. Right. You'd think. You'd think in an environment like this. Um, but, but but it seems like the normal rules don't apply for, for gold at the moment in terms of safe harbor or in, in investing and, you know, this kind of whole anti-fiat uh, narrative that was kind of going around last year. So, um, are you, how, how, I mean, how was your money situation? Have you found it? Harder to raise money in in this environment. I mean, I know I know you raised some back in uh, March, which was I guess the beginning of the kind of downturn. But are you looking, or have you spoken to the market and getting a sense of the availability of capital for coming like yours? Yeah, we do. The prospectus um, uh, financing in March uh, six point nine million. That was that was uh, conducted largely by resource capital. Um, actually, Eric Sprott owns 16.9% of the company. I don't think his ownership has ever gone down. Uh, he actually took 30% of that last financing uh, itself. Um, I, th- I think he's going to participate again. And then I have, um, um, frankly, I have a lot of guys that believe in me um, because of my past. And, and I know there's uh, money waiting on the sidelines uh, when, when we need it. Now, we don't want to raise too much at this price. It would be just to get through our, our uh, resource report in the end of the year, probably, and then hope we see a reevaluation uh, and, you know, before we resume the heavy drilling again. Okay, okay. Well, look, I, I don't, don't want to make this session too, you know, um, heavy in, in, in that sense. I, I, you know, I know, you reminded me, Eric Sprott was a major shareholder in this, which is always um, good in terms of access to Capital, um, assuming he follows his his money, um, and, and gives it gives you that access or certainly that visibility. So that that's really good news. You're also delivering on the ground um, here, nice high grade intercepts, and so nice grade high high grade silver with with good intercepts. Um, why don't you tell us about you know what you're seeing since we since we last saw you? I, I bet quite a bit, but more recently, that's uh, enabling you to put out a 43101 resource at the end of this year. We've got better, honestly. We've got better and more efficient at targeting. Part of that, you know, what's a curiously what was a big help was the very fine tuned lidar because we then we could bring in liniments to actual the structure. You kind of focus the drilling. The other thing we found out is we went both north and south. Uh, from the uh, Royal Colonial Mines, what we found is that a large part of the, the epithermal overprint wasn't there. So we're going north and south, and we're seeing a lot more epithermal over two, two phases of mesothermal mineralization, more electrum, more native gold, more native silver, more pyrogrite than we've ever seen. And I think it's a part of that epithermal overprint, which, which was eroded off for the, for the Spaniards. Um, and the other thing I think is that um, we've drilled a little bit deeper uh, and, and we really aren't, you know, it isn't really a bonanza situation per se, except for that local epithermal. What we've got is deep mineralization that could go to a kilometer or more. 
Okay. Okay. And maybe, maybe we can do a slightly more technical session n- next time around. But I'm, I'm yes. just trying to keep this kind of high level and digestible yes. for people who are perhaps new to, yeah. new to the story, um, if we can, which is because, because if I think of, um, companies like Visa Silver, who we've had on recently and, um, BlackRock Silver, um, as, as well, they're doing, they're doing a job, a good job of just banging out these high grade silver, um, you know, High, high grade veins, right? That 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 they're, that they're chasing, but they're also doing quite a good job in the market in terms of talking to the market. So, how are you? Because we're seeing press, we're seeing you're increasing the, the amount of press releases you, you guys are putting out now. But how are you engaging with the market and trying to get people to you know talk about your story? Because you, what are you thirty million market cap at the moment? Um, it's a kind of it's a little bit harder down at these levels, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and you know it's um, sometimes a little, it's a little bit discouraging because you don't see a whole lot of, of, of movement. I, we are actually seeing a little bit of a steady movement now. Um, a lot of ours is is um, people like yourself, other ty- other interviews, uh, participating in some conference like the Red Cloud Conference I just got done with. Um, so it's more low cost, not. You know, overly, overly promotional, just a straight story from me. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that was my takeaway from like when I spoke to you September 2020 was uh, kind of old school, straight, straight talking, drilling, prospecting message. But obviously, you've done a lot since then. Like you say, you bet you seemed you really have honed in and, and are able to, you know, find this, this higher grade stuff a, a bit more readily and a bit more easily. So, um, I mean, LIDAR, you mean, so did you say LIDAR? It was LIDAR in terms of the tools. Uh, LIDAR. Right. Yes. So yes, in, in terms of the, to the tools that you, you've, you've employed, um, obviously it's working for you. With the capital that you you don't go and raise money now until you put the resource there, what, and hopefully at a higher valuation because it'll be cheaper money, obviously, but what do you think you need to be able to put out in the market at the end of this year? If you're signaling, I'm going to put out a 43-101 resource at the end of this year and it underwhelms, you're in trouble, right? So what do you think that number needs to look like? What's going to get the market excited? Well, we have a uh, internal guidance on that that we carefully put together. Okay. With- Correct BCSC disclosure. Yeah. And that's uh, between 45 and 55 million ounces as silver equivalent ounces at between 550 and 750 grams silver equivalent. We um, we think just, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's internal estimations, but it's good internal estimations. But we think we're going to, that resource report, you know, could easily be w- within the top 25 percentile on on primary silver mine resources. Yeah, that's 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 a good number. Wowzers. Um, so, how, and if you do do that, are you the guys to kind of keep taking? Because you you know when we spoke, you, we talked the language of you know, prospectors, right? Not advanced exploration, not developers. So, you know, what, what's your intent with Santa Ana? I think the most likely outcome is at the, at the pace we're moving and. Potentially increasing the resource. I, I think it's to get it up to 100 million silver equivalent in ounces, and and with that grade, um, it can be a fairly low uh, production rate, and still have the you know 10 million ounces of silver production a year. I mean, you know, forca- forecasting just on on what I know, um, and so um, I, I just uh, I think what we um, what we have, we have to get that across, and then also I think we have to do overall a better explanation of the technical aspects of the property visually, um, maybe than we've done in the past. Okay, so but but it comes back to the question: are, are you the guys? Are you the guys to take this thing forward, or are you going back to prospector roots and saying you need to bring a partner in here? You need whether it be the capital or development um, capability to move this. This forward. I, when's the point you sort of monetize this, or do you can you continue to raise? Capital I think we. Mo- I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I think we monetize it about 100 million silver okay. ounces, honestly. But maybe still have a, a retained interest in some of the distal parts of the district where we put that together for whoever comes in. Um, but 
I don't think we're minors. I, I think that's a whole different uh, uh, discipline in a sense uh, and focus. And also that's where all the bloody risk is. And um, for, for us, I think it's better, it would be better to monetize and then repeat the process with uh, with projects we got lined up to go in the same direction as Santa Ana. Right, and how many, how many projects are there lined up to go in, or next in the queue? Uh, we have uh, two uh, major ones, and, and and we've decided uh, probably back in 2020 that we're going to concentrate on on extremely high grade vein systems that look large. So we have our our Helia project is closest uh, to being drilled. It's possible we would scout drill that just to um, uh, bring attention to a partner or bring or bring attention to the market. I should also I should say. Um, the thing about Arhelia is it was mined by the British, uh, so you can walk through cross cuts and, I mean, you can put your hammer on 3.8 meter veins at, uh, at 22 and a half grams gold um, and, and, and blocked out panels, essentially. And then this third would be uh, our, our uh, Narin, uh, Mijama project in Nariño. Uh, realistically, that's going to take more time because... Uh, there's uh, indigenous there. There's some, some uh, uh, still some remnant uh, guerrilla activity with the ELN. And so it's just a little bit more complicated. So that would be third. Uh, the rest of our projects we consider with an open pit component, uh, which would be Orbeja and, and, and Terrace uh, near the immediately adjacent to the Newmont uh, uh, Agnico joint venture. On the and terrace immediately adjacent to uh, uh, Gramalote, those open pit components we want to um, uh, GV out. Okay, and so so they're carried forward by a third party. So you, the, 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 there's the, there's a kind of portfolio at various stages sitting sitting behind this. So to to kind of get out that and get the capital for that, you monetize Santa Ana. So um, what's that? Hundred hundred? You said you said a um, hundred million ounce project. What's that equivalent? Like two million gold ounce equivalent, right? Something like that. Yeah, hundred a hundred million uh, silver, a hundred million silver equivalent in ounces. That's going to be about a hundred to one silver gold. A hundred to one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's about seven and a half grams gold, eight hundred and sixty grams uh, silver. And um, okay, so million and, ounce you know, gold equivalent, right? Yeah, it, you know, and you can just look at uh, you can just look at some. EV enterprise value dollar per ounce or market value dollar per ounce, and I mean just the average is about three dollars. So it's it's there's some arithmetic there that can be done with millions of ounces times that yeah. dollar per ounce. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, th- I think I was doing the value calculation. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay. So that, that that's kind of interesting. Do you think do you think that's enough these days, million ounce? Because there's there's a lot of million ounce projects around, and they, like there's no mean feat to kind of get there, but. You know, should you be trying to move, move it further along than that? Um, is that a question of what capital is available for you to do additional drilling? Because we, we, we're hearing more and more that the big the big guys are, you know, they start to pay attention when they see two million ounces, and when it gets above that, then you, know, you really got, got their attention. So, um, he, he picks up a million ounce project from you. Well, actually, we're talking to some underground miners. Uh, we've got a couple of CAs. Just they want to casually keep keep appraised of the of the da- of the data, mm-hmm. the progression of the data. Um, the other thing is, is you can't talk about ounces, million ounces, without talking about grade. Yeah, because uh, you know a million ounces at at fifteen hundred grams silver equivalent, uh, or 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 even even diluted to Eight, eight, 800, 750, 800 grams silver equivalent. Uh, people are going to come in there for that grade and then have the confidence to expand it. And the other thing, too, is that the upside potential uh, of the project is kind of, we've got a handle on it. I mean, we know we have over 60, 70 kilometers of veins. Um, I mean, just that itself puts it in the, in the, in, in the class of a Fresnillo or a Guanajuato in terms of of uh, bank potential. So, you know, I, I, I don't think we have to find everything there to monetize it. Um, we would like to participate in its increase in some fashion. Uh, you mean operate the exploration ideally, but 
Um, I, th- I think we'll find someone that wants Santana. Right. Okay. It's obviously it's just going to be a sense of um, you know cost of mining. So like we sort of have a a, a, a rough rule that sort of mining um, underground for for gold in Canada, you need three and a half four grams per ton to kind of make the economics make sense. What was it like in Mexico in terms of the type of gr- minimum grade that you'd need to see for underground uh, mining? In Colombia. I oh, saw um, in Colombia. Yeah, no problem. In <laughs> Colombia. I know you meant Colombia. Um, uh, in Colombia, maybe there's a little bit of personal bias in there, but if, if you go back to um, Graham's gold equivalent, I would in Colombia. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be interested in underground mine under seven grams uh, gold. So right. What would that be? Yeah. So it's in 400, 500 grams, or four hundred. Anyway, four hundred grams. Yeah. Uh, silver equivalent right. or something like that. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, that that that. So you're you're feeling quite confident then on your in terms of your grading. I can see that. Um, brilliant. Um, so um, just just so, so where, do, where do we go from here then? So if we, we're just sitting, we're going to wait for this resource to come out. Then yeah, that that that's the moment. But as soon as it comes out, you'd be going to raise some capital. In which case, how much? I think since we'll end a year we'll, or after the resource report, we should be a, in a position of have the of the market value is higher. I think that would be the time to go back to the market. Not not necessarily um, since we're in the, since we'll still be in the position of continually growing the thing. I don't think we need to, you know, raise the whole next next year or something like that. But I would envision something like on the order of uh, the last prospectus financing, maybe of, of six or seven million. Okay, and, and just use that use that wisely and and, and get results with it. Yeah, you, you've also got you, um, in, in Canada. You've kind of also got that funny, um, you know, tax year, haven't you, to deal with? So people start having to o- offload stuff and then kind of buy back in, and there's sort of usually third, fourth week of January. Um, you've got that to contend with um, in there, but it's, it's, it's quite a nice time for those that uh, stand out for sure. Um, and obviously, I think precious metals is a is a big piece of the um, the investment. Um, uh, for Canadians, uh, for sure. Um, so, you, how, how do you? So, I'm just, I'm just sort of intrigued about um, how you kind of um, work your way through the re- the re- this rest of this year um, in the context of really wonky markets, in context of the politics, in context of um, you know people's attitudes to silver. Is it is it just sort of keep your head down? And, and get on with it, or is there a little is there a little bit of you thinking, well, let's just hunker down for a while and not. Not spend um, money as quickly. I mean, what's your approach to how, how you come at it? I, I think one, um, as we've done continuously, we need to get into the door and, and see the new um, National Agency of Mining Director. We need to see the new uh, Ministry of Interior. I mean, we've, we've actually had our guys sit down with them before, not with these guys, uh, but just to let them, let us know who we are and what exactly what we're doing. Um, I think too, we need to just protect the, the social outreach we're doing and, and the social support. Um, then I think that uh, what we're doing in terms of the program is we'll have an asset cutoff at, in uh, roughly uh, third week in September, maybe first week of October, uh, at which point that's the drilling that we're going into the resource report. So we could probably, uh, we may uh, uh for practical reasons, for exploration targeting reasons, we may actually reduce that drilling and that spend uh, for the rest of the year. Come back and do a financing at hopefully a higher price that's, that values a, a significant and impressively impressive uh, resource with an impressive grade. And, and then um, probably uh, drill roughly uh, uh, in 12 months what we have done in about two years or so, because what we will, we do anticipate better results and more efficient drilling. So, um, and the, another thing too, is that uh, we made a conscious decision to get um, more and more shoots, uh, more areas of, of strike mineralization. We've got about three kilometers of cumulative strike, as opposed to doing the slow and deep poles. So we do have an immediate uh, benefit expected, and it's a mesothermal system, I mean, a deep system. So we do expect an immediate benefit just by going back and, 
and driven deeper. Okay, it's interesting. Well, look, I, I guess I'm intrigued by this. So, you know, 17, 18 kilometers of you know cumulative vein length. That in terms of the the scale of, of this, and um, what that means for you in terms of how you sell that or pitch that to potential funders, buyers, JV partners, wherever you go with that thing. Um, I think that's the, that's the, that's kind of the interesting bit to me because of you. you the, the, say the, the, the grades are grades are super, and it's going to be super attractive. But the market the market just isn't listening at the moment. Um, and right. you know, I, I don't think that's on you. I think that's just on the market at the moment. So um, more more of the same with you know a budget at the beginning of next year will be interesting um, for sure. But like um like look, thanks for coming thanks for coming back on. So I really I, I appreciate it. It's a nice reminder. Of, actually, I did like it first time around. Um, and uh, a reminder that you've actually been delivering the whole way whole way along here. So um, let's get you back on and maybe have a bit more of a technical conversation with um, with our geo, um, so we can sort of understand the picture that you're seeing underground. Um, but for now, I guess it's a silver story. Perhaps people should be looking at. So I'm in, I'm well invested. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but but yeah, I think it's uh, I, I'd appreciate I really appreciate that opportunity, Matt. To, Talk with the more, you know, on a more technical basis too. I kind of live and breathe that stuff, and so I, I, I apologize if I put it too much into this. Interview. No, 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 not at all. It's it's, it's just I, I think it's kind of I think it's really important to you for for people to kind of sort of see the big the big picture of you know where you've come from and the th- the thesis for you know that you're 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 walking into feeding into and um and get the comfort that perhaps. It's Colombia is not. It depends on where you are in Colombia, and if you've got the local support, that that makes up things a lot easier um, for you, and it shouldn't discount you as a result of whatever the kind of headlines are um, out there with regards to Petro, etc. So, no, I appreciate your time today. Um, nice one. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Matt. I really do.